21st. I'll be flying from Austin, Texas, my home, to Aspen, Colorado. I'm gonna stay overnight in Aspen, Colorado, and then hike the Maroon Bells, the Four Pass Loop.
This is my first glimpse of West Maroon Pass. You can see it right there, the low point to the right of the trail. I've only been hiking for about 30 minutes and I'm already whooped. But uh, no rest for the weary. Keep on trucking. It's uh, 8.43 in the morning right now. Past the last switchback is pretty much a straight line up at this point. You can see people right between the rocks up there. Well, I have arrived. It's 9.26, about an hour and 15 minutes after my departure from camp number 40 at 11.227. My GPS says we're about 12.500. Right here is the peak, or the pass, excuse me. And over there is where I'm headed. Back down and back up to Frigid Air Pass. That was pure torture. A few steps, rest, breathe, repeat. Uh, obviously, there's people that can do it very easily. At my campsite, I saw people all afternoon and evening with just camelbacks, nothing else. Just them and their tennis shoes and camelbacks. And obviously, coming from this direction, so those that live in the area that do this on a regular basis it's obviously pretty easy but for us Texans that come up here every once every few years it is rough I've reached the peak completely out of breath you can see the trail it makes its way it's very deceiving because it's basically flat you can see those people remember the fork I told you about and goes up over that ridge. Well, coming up this is just, it's total pain, especially on your Achilles. But that pass is checked. Now, according to this, I'm not all the way at the top to see the other side, so I'll do that for you next just getting you a view of this side since you can't see both at the same time let's make our way up to the top the other side. 
can believe this is called Forever at Basin. This peak, or pass, excuse me, is a little more crowd friendly. You can see there's some trails you can go off, find some solitude if you want. Oh, by the way, it's 11.07. So I made it from my Camp 40 to the top of Frigidaire from 8.15 to 11.07. I'll do the math later. I'm too tired to think about it now. Now, I gotta find my next camp somewhere before North Fork Cutoff Trail. I'm gonna be following this ravine and this tree line down in the middle until I get to that fork. almost feel like right now is a good time for a break, but there's no shade. And it's pretty close to blue skies. It's hazy, which the Grizzly Creek fire, you can, you can appreciate it. I mean, you can see the haze here. It's not noticeable in things that are close up for sure. And you can't smell anything, but you can definitely see the haze. But again, no issue for sensitivity for me anyway. I can't smell it, can't even notice it except for the sight. All right, well, I assume this way down is as bad as the other way up, so I guess I'll get started. Maybe I'll find a nice tree with a rock somewhere to eat lunch at about noon, which is about 50 minutes from now. Until then, we can see the, the switchbacks going down here. It gives you an idea of how steep this section is. I can see, and I'm not even looking at all of them because there's some that go this way. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, until you get to that out rock outcropping right there. Luckily, I'm going down and not up. No more passes today. I came out of those woods. I somehow missed the trail again. But I came out to the right here 
on something that had been traveled either by animals or a few people. Because the trail I was on started getting denser and denser and it didn't look like it was well traveled. The trails on this side of the creek that I'm on or on that side, I actually can't tell at this point. I know it's somewhere down here by the creek. But, uh, let's not forget how beautiful that is. That's the waterfall everyone talks about. Well, now to find the trail. Because I think the trail that I was on was going to lead me way up to one of those ledges. And I did not want to go there. Twenty-two in the morning on Monday, August 24th. I came down from that mountain range. The haze in the sun, I don't think you can see the waterfall, but it's straight in front of us. What a beautiful view. I'm in this incredible valley. All to myself. shades. Beautiful. Oh wow, this is the first decent creek crossing I've seen. Everything else is pretty tame. Looks like someone was nice enough to drag some dead trees across to make it easy to get across. I checked my map. And there is indeed a creek crossing, so I haven't wandered off the trail again today. So far, two wrong passes, two wrong trails. Last night I got down to about 40, 40 to 45 degrees in my tent. A little cooler, but overall very happy with the campsite. It's really close to some nice water. I think there would have been several more choices, but at the time I heard thunder, I heard saw sprinkles, and I was worried that there might be a storm, so I thought, man, I better get set up.
I believe in life. In order to be fulfilled, you need to be constantly making progress on something, anything, whether it's a hobby, an art, your job, your profession, or your physical fitness. And for me, what gets me through the year, whenever I reach these emotional low points, is purpose. Something that drives me forward to do something that I want to do. It doesn't matter if it's a 5K or the world's toughest race. If you're getting out there and you're doing something that's the world's toughest anything to you, you're gonna be very happy with yourself. So back to purpose and progress. Always be making progress in your life. Don't ever become stagnant in anything that you do. Don't ever settle, whether it's your financial well-being, your physical form, or your skills in any hobby or art. Keep making progress and have a goal and set out to accomplish that goal. And when you do, you'll be proud of yourself. And don't stop when you've reached that goal. Set a new goal that's even higher and more difficult. Because that's what life is all about.